but I just don't think it's a very beautiful garment. This shape is so strange and odd that I don't really get it. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 7, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. But don't forget to watch till the end of the video because that's where I'll let you know who had the best and worst looks of the week. And the runway theme this week is, I can buy my own flowers. That is right, the queens must give us their best interpretation of a floral look on the runway. Up first, it's Plasma, and Plasma is coming in in yellow roses. She's got this old school head to toe roses all over. She's got her little umbrella and she said she's giving you a little bit of My Fair Lady and a little bit of Funny Girl. And honestly, you see their reference right away. First of all, this is so typically Plasma where it's got this very old Hollywood references. But what I really love is that she didn't shy away from flowers. With flowers, it could be very basic flowers for spring sort of vibe but actually she decided no i'm gonna go in a, a different direction and i'm gonna take this theme and i'm gonna run with it and i'm gonna give you lots and lots of flowers and flowers she did it does remind me a little bit of what scarlet envy did on all stars that being said that was an all stars edition and this lives right up to it usually when people come in on for their first time their looks aren't that elevated and this feels elevated all in all, I love this look. It's very referential, very cool, and it's very much flowers. And that is why it is very much going to get a fab. <laughs> Next up, it's Safira Cristal. And Safira Cristal is coming in in the giant flower. She's coming in in the biggest, biggest gown you've ever seen. It is a giant flower. And she inside is the little stem coming out of the center. She is definitely pollinated, baby. First of all, this is such a wow runway. This is the runway that if you did it on a bad week, it would probably save you because it is so over the top, so big. And so what we love to see on Drag Race, only drag queens can pull off shit like this. And that's what I love about drag. If you start looking at the outfit, it is actually so smart and detailed. I want you to particularly look at her hair. Her hair is like this weird shape, and if you didn't see it with this outfit, you'd be like, tell the tubby what? But actually with it, you'd realize that it's actually the inside of the flower, and it is so architectural and sculptural, and it really adds to the va 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 voomness of this whole entire gown. All in all, this is perfection, and I am so happy to see Safira Cristal not in blue! It goes to show that she is a queen through and through, and it doesn't matter what color you give her, she can do it. If you hadn't guessed, this one is 100% gonna be a fab from me. Next up, it's Morphine Loves Dion, and Morphine is coming out in the Miami Flower Power Child. She's giving you a little bit of hippies, maybe a little bit of Woodstock, going to a concert in the 70s, and she is looking great. The main issue we have with Morphine here is that she followed Plasma and Safira Cristal, who went big and even bigger. So when Morphine comes out, you're almost a little bit underwhelmed because you're thinking, shit, this is not that great. But once you start actually looking at the garment and looking at the vibe, I like that she went in this direction. Flowers could have went in so many different ways and most people are gonna give you actual flowers so that she went with this like flower power child way. It's super cute and super different. And it honestly fits with Morphine's personality. She shows a little bit of skin, she's a little bit sexy and you know, she's got a little twist when she reveals her little uh, tongue. The only issue I have with this look is that it could look a little costumey. It could look like I'm going to Halloween and I'm being a 70s person for Halloween. So you do need to elevate it a bit. And a bit she did. She rhinestoned everything to make it feel a little zhuzhed up, but it could have went one step further. As the judges said, I think just having the whole inside lined with a fabric would have like made it feel more rich and more expensive. I also wish she would have looked at some of the little details, for example, on her vest, if she had a whole bunch of little 
pins, you know, as you collect them, and it would have made it feel a little bit more lived in, a little bit more real, a little bit more thought through in the sort of detail department. But overall, even with all those little details, I think she looks pretty good, and that is why I'm still gonna give her a bow. <laughs> Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage is coming in representing the red rose. She's in head to toe red with a giant rose on her head, rose on her shoulders, and she's throwing roses in the air. She is glittered to the gods. When the theme came out as florals, this is exactly what I thought one of the drag queens was gonna do. And that's both good and bad. The thing about Maya Iman is that she really takes the runway themes and runs with them a little bit too literal for me. She's not really adding that sort of extra concept to it. For example, they said flower, she said, I'm gonna give you the red rose. Does she look beautiful? Yes, she looks beautiful, but I'm missing that uniqueness that makes her her. I feel like any drag queen can wear this and look just as good as her. Is it a great gown though? Yeah, it's a great gown. It looks well put together, it looks really good, it looks very expensive, and this is the best that Maya has looked. All in all, it's not my favorite. And I say that just because I like things that are a little bit different, I wanna be inspired when I watch Drag Race, and this feels like I've seen it before. That being said, I can't fault a great look, and that is why, for Miss Maya Iman LePage, she is gonna get a bow. <laughs> Next up, it's Dawn, and Dawn is coming out as Ghoul Dawn. She's coming out in this spooky interpretation of florals. She said she's going for dead flowers meets ghost bride meets demon, or maybe she didn't say that, but I'm saying that. And I love that she went in a completely own direction. And that is the difference between a drag queen like Dawn and a drag queen like Maya Mon. Dawn is always thinking outside the box. She's always pushing boundaries and she's always doing it in her own way. And in her own way, she did today. She decided, you know what? Everyone's gonna go florals and everyone's gonna be happy. I'm gonna be dark and spooky. And I love this. If I was on the show and I got florals, dark and spooky was definitely the way I would do it. It is much more unique, much more fun, much more me, but also much more Dawn. I love the dress, it is very ornate, very detailed, and I love like this dark ombre to this lighter ombre shade that she goes into. It really gives you this nice elevation. There is a few things that kind of throw me off, and it is the red and the white. The red, I don't mind it so much, the red gloves with the red frilly bit around her neck. I think that as individual pieces, they're needed and they're great. I probably would have done them in a different color, maybe a lighter blue, just to continue that theme up to the top. But what really throws me off is actually her face. She decided to paint her face white, which I get it because she's going for that full ombre and it blends into her hair. But in order to get like this spooky gargoyle-y vibe, I would have went more with a gray tone and it would have given you a little bit more like gargoyle sitting on a cemetery tombstone. That being said, this is an artistic choice and when we're critiquing artistic choices it's all very individual so it's all about how you would interpret it and you know what the fact that that's what I'm critiquing goes to show how intelligent Dawn is all in all I love this look I love Dawn's way of thinking and it is definitely gonna be a bow next up it's Megami and Megami is coming out as the bride to be but wait she has a stained garment. She throws it away and now she is strutting down the runway in lingerie. She's giving you the full bedroom bride fantasy. So first things first, I think that I love the storytelling of this. Uh, Megami always goes in different directions and I love that she's always thinking about things in a different way. And the fact that she went from florals to bride, I thought was really Fun. Let's start with the positives. The positives is her hair looks amazing. The amount of florals is genius. I love this sort of hip pads of florals. It's really giving you florals in many different places and not just like stuck in one little place. So it is really giving you that abundance of flowers that you need for a floral runway. The part that I don't really like is the way she sold the garment. For example, she comes out and she's holding this white wedding dress that's stained and then she throws it away. I actually wish she was wearing this white wedding dress that was stained and then she pulled it off and turned it into to reveal what was underneath. I just 
think that that would have helped a little bit with the storytelling. Otherwise, if she didn't make it a reveal, the storytelling wasn't really there in this one. It was there for two seconds, it disappeared. Unless you heard the voiceover, you wouldn't have necessarily got it. Now let's get to the garment itself. The garment itself is just simple lingerie. And normally I would say this is not a big deal because honestly it's not. She's got a whole bunch of other stuff going on around it. So you kind of need some undergarment pieces to make it work. The only problem I have is that but for her fairy runway, she did a lacy attire. So this is like twice that we are now seeing this sort of lace version. And that's what kind of bothers me. Not that she's doing it, that she's doing it twice. Granted, they are very different. That's why I think had she come out in the big ball gown and had the reveal, then it wouldn't have mattered because it would have been about the first dress and the second dress as opposed to just focusing on one. All in all, with all of that being said, I still think she looks great. And I still think like I like her concept. I like that nobody else did anything like this. And that's why she's still gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Nymphia Wind. And Nymphia Wind is coming out in this green avant-garde floral cacti thing with a flower on her headpiece. As she walks down the runway, her hands come up and she's growing little petals. Now, before I get into this critique, I will say that Nymphia is one of my favorite queens of the season. So the fact that she went ookie booky off the wall kooky as Nymphia does, I love that for her because no one else would have thought of whatever this was. It is very avant-garde, very well made, and very put together. The thing is, I have no idea what this is. Usually Nymphia is that perfect mix of stupid fashion and professional all mixed together. And although you see pieces of that in here, it's lost on me. Clearly it's well made, clearly she's got a theme, clearly it fits Nymphia's thinking and way of being and her personality, but I just don't think it's a very beautiful garment. This shape is so strange and odd that I don't really get it. I do like the flower on her head and I do like that she, you know, pops out and she's got little flowers in her hands, but that's pretty much about it. And that's sort of like my issue. I stand here staring at it, wanting to love it, but I just don't. So as much as I can sit here and pretend it is the coolest, most avant-garde thing, I don't get it. And so for me, it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Q. And Q is coming out in these pink lotus, or are they hydrangeas? Girl, I don't know my flowers. She's coming out in these full floral alien praying mantis attire. She is definitely giving you floral beast, honey. So first things first, if you watch Drag Race or if you watch a lot of drag, this whole arm thing that uh, we've seen it done so many times on Drag Race, we even saw it this same week on UK vs. The World. And if you haven't, go watch my other video on that. But the problem I have with it here is that there's no rhyme or reason for it. Does it look cool? Does it give you impact? Absolutely. But why is she this creature filled with flowers? It makes absolutely no sense. That being said, it is freaking cool. The whole outfit itself is definitely decked out in floral from head to toe, and it definitely looks expensive. Whether I like it or not, it definitely makes an impact on the stage. Personally, I love these sort of giant arm things, but I just think it would have been better suited for another runway. This one feels like it was jammed in there because she wanted to do it, as opposed to like having a cohesive theme that comes together. In terms of the garment itself, all of it is perfection. The only thing I would have wished is that her flowers on her hair were like three times bigger because she's got these giant arms and florals all over the place. I feel like her it, it needs to continue up to give you that full like dramatic character because her head looks kind of tiny comparative to everything else. Other than that, it's pretty freaking well made. If I ignore the fact that she's got these arms and I just look at it for what it is, it is amazingly well made and gorgeous and I can never fault a gorgeous outfit. Would I wear it? Yeah, I would wear it. Don't know where I'd wear it, but I'd wear it. And that is why for Miss Q, I'm gonna have to go with a bow. 
Next up, it's Plain Jane. And Plain Jane is coming out in this little itty bitty asymmetrical dress. She's paired it with flowers in her hair and a long ponytail. Before she even starts talking, I immediately understood it to be a sort of Midsummer's Festival sort of vibe. You know, that spring festival in Sweden. But she says, no, she's actually giving you Rapunzel and that is why her ponytail is so long. And as she pulls it, you see that she's got the little prince hanging on the end. And I think automatically I think, oh, what a cute story. Didn't initially get it, but I like it. The thing that I love about Plain Jane is Plain Jane is giving you florals in multiple ways. On her dress, you can see a floral pattern on it, but on top of it, she stuck flowers on here and there. She's got flowers in her hair and she's got flowers all along her ponytail. Now I wish, honestly, there was a little bit more flowers. I'm not saying like a huge amount, but I think a crown of flowers would have been better. Maybe because I still got that Midsummer's festival in my mind. And maybe even like a little basket of flowers that she can sort of toss. But that's just me being super picky. Despite being like such a tiny, simple dress, it looks very well made and very elevated. And I love that she had a concept to it. So all in all, I have to, I have to give her a bow. It's Tsunami Muse and Tsunami Muse is coming in in this like lime green ruffle dress with this red shawl and this black hair. As she comes out and I see the bright green color, my mind immediately goes to Little Shop of Horrors. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is not going to be a great one because there's so many amazing Little Shop of Horrors done. I'm thinking Danny Beard from UK. I'm thinking Silvana from Italy. But then she says, no, I am not giving you a little shop of horrors, but I am giving you an upside down bouquet. And honestly, that made it worse. I didn't get that it was an upside down bouquet. And even at that, why do an upside down bouquet? This is drag. Give us a right side up bouquet. Why didn't she do a dress more inspired by Moschino with the flowers coming out of the top? Yes, we've seen it done a couple of times, but it would have worked for this. I think it works better right side up than it does upside down. Upside down, it just looks like a dress. Unless you told me it was a bouquet, there was no way I would have understood that it was a bouquet. And if it was a bouquet, shouldn't you have like tons of flowers coming out of the bottom of it to really give you that fantasy, to really sell you that story? And that's where I was like, mm. Yeah, you kind of lost me, girl. You kind of lost me. I look at this and I don't think that this is at all of Tsunami's best work at all. I barely understood it for this theme. And honestly, I don't really have a lot to say on it, except for it's definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> and that is it for this week's episode. Now I will say I'm very happy to see this sort of variety on a floral runway. Florals could have went really bad, but I love how everybody did different interpretations. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you're here. The reason why you guys are here are to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week had to go to this Tsunami Muse. All in all, I think this was a miss and it was, I think, the least successful on the runway. So I had no choice but to give it to her. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week, I have to give it to... Plasma! Yep, I just love this one. I know most people are gonna say, what, you gave it to Plasma, you didn't give it to Q, you didn't give it to Safira. And the reality is both Q and Safira were genius, but I did find them a little bit costumey and a little bit over the top. And I found that Q really got that balance of enough florals, but make it costumey and make it fashion and make it referential. And that's what I love in my drag. I love it to be a moment. And I think Plasma gave us that moment. That's why she got my fab of the week. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button because I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the series and I'm very, very close. Well, that is it for today and I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you want to watch more, just go ahead and binge watch one of my other videos or I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.